a little over two years ago, we were talking about this car and specifically if you should buy a Cat N or a written off or insurance write off but not structurally damaged vehicle. And I think the general consensus in that video is still pretty much true. But well, we've learned quite a lot in the last two years or so. So let's jump inside where there's less pigeons and it's a bit quieter. And we'll talk about what we've learned and a bit of an update to, well, the car itself and if you should buy a cat and car too. So I thought I would start off with a bit of a recap of what we've done to the car to fix some of the, the various issues that we've found and that have presented themselves. The biggest one that especially I've worked on has to be the rear subframe. We actually bought a second second hand subframe, uh, used or bought a hydraulic press to push out all of the bushings in and then pressed new ones in and then swapped the subframes for you know the one that was on the car to the replacement one as the subframe bushings that were on the car had started to deteriorate, they were torn and we're fairly certain it was affecting handling to at least some degree. The other fairly major repair that we did more recently was to the rear springs where especially the left side we found that there was basically a chunk of the spring that had snapped off. Luckily hadn't flung off and damaged anything but was definitely in need of repair and we ended up replacing the shocks, the spring seats and actually the rear trailing arm as the sort of shaft snapped on it and so we had to repair that and of course did both sides as well. There have also been a few other more minor issues. There's still some bodywork like the cracked bumper that's very much still there and uh, a few other bits and pieces or some uh, sort of more technical problems with things like the EGR. And there's actually a very interesting issue that we're still in the process of diagnosing with the park, uh, front parking sensors or technically parking sensors all around as they don't work. The rear facing camera does, but uh, we think that it's something to do with the front wiring harness, but either way, there's still some diagnosing to be done there. We did also do the uh, water in the floor well by resealing the uh, vapor barrier, which seems to have worked just fine. So there's definitely a few things that we've had to repair over the sort of two or so years that we've had this. So that's what's sort of what has been wrong and I suppose what still is wrong with this car. But to relay that to you, should you buy a cat and car? Well, the answer is pretty much always still no unless you have things like the paperwork to back up what has been repaired and especially what the damage was initially. We actually don't know what accident this car has been in. We think it might have been a sort of uh, uh, knock-on collision, you know, rear end and then the front end was damaged, but we're not sure. We don't have any evidence of that, you know, any pictures of the accident or anything like that. Uh, and so having that sort of information and having the receipts for what parts have been used, the receipts for the labor for what's been repaired, those sorts of things are, I think, quite crucial in making sure that you're getting a fairly reliable vehicle. Now, for the most part, this has been fine, but obviously the fact that we've repaired that many things on it uh, that's not something that the average person uh, necessarily can do or even wants to do. If you want to have a, a reliable car and you're just looking for a good deal on it, you need to be aware of what you're getting yourself into. You definitely need to be aware that even if you have all of the receipts for, for everything that was done, all the work that was done, all the you know parts that have been repaired, you're still likely to find uh, things like accelerated wear on other components that weren't necessarily you know, damaged in the accident necessarily, but can have you know accelerated wear. Things like suspension bushings. We're relatively sure that the suspension bushings in the, the subframe at the back uh, likely weren't really part of the initial damage, but there is a chance that that had some accelerated wear, and so that's why we had to replace them at least a little bit earlier than you might have otherwise expected to. So things like that, things like uh, obviously the, the bodywork damage, but even the little things like our parking sensor issue is not something that you would necessarily have picked up on. And it might have even worked, you know, immediately after the, the accident and, you know, when things were repaired. But those sorts of issues can be hard to diagnose and can be, you know, uh, more hidden and not necessarily paired. And so you're going to need to factor in some amount of budget and time for those things to end up cropping up in the future. As a general rule, you need to understand what trade off you're making here. By buying a likely cheaper vehicle that has the cat end status, you are likely saving some cash up front, which is always good. 
but you're likely going to end up paying the same or possibly even more later down the line in things with you know, repairs or with even just your time in diagnosing it or the slightly higher likelihood that it's going to leave you stranded or it's going to be uh, a lot more of a, a pain and a hassle to, to deal with compared to buying a non cat -N vehicle with the same sort of you know, budget or that sort of thing. So be aware of the trade-offs that you're making. As long as you're informed about your decision and you know what you're getting yourself into, it can be a good deal. Especially if you are getting a very good deal in it, I'd probably be a little suspicious of, uh, of that deal. But as long as you're prepared to, to deal with what may come, then sure, buy a cat and car. If you're very much prepared for it. So that is what we've been up to with the cat and car and hopefully a bit of information for you in terms of if you should uh, pick one up yourself as well. As always, the general consensus is make sure you've got the paperwork and that uh, you understand it's probably still going to be a bit of work as well. But yeah, that's kind of it for this video. If you want to see more videos like this one, hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification icon. You can also check out plenty of other videos on the end cards when they pop up in a second. And if you want to support the channel, you can check out hoodies or t-shirts like this one. Other links in the description if you're interested. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.